today we are going to discuss about toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma gondii is a protozoan parasite that infects most species of warm-blooded animals including humans and causes the disease called as toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasma gondii has very low host specificity and it will probably infect almost any mammals. It has also been reported from birds around the world. Toxoplasma is an obligate intracellular parasite. Its life cycle includes two phases that is intestinal and extraintestinal phases. Most of the infection cases are asymptomatic. However, sometimes it may lead to hepatitis, pneumonia, blindness, severe neurological problems. Problem is more severe immunocompromised patients. In uh, intratransplantal transmission may lead to problem related to birth like spontaneous abortion, stillbirth, child with various various mental and physical problems. Epidemiology Toxoplasma gondii has been found worldwide in carnivorous and herbivorous mammals and birds. It has also been found in every population group of human investigated. However, the typhoid host was found to be cat. It has been associated with the transmission of this parasite to all kinds of populations. It is generally assumed that approximately 25 to 30 percent of the world's human population is infected with toxoplasma. Prevalence vary widely between countries from 10 to 18, 80 percent. Now, the morphology this uh, parasite is having various intermediate stages. We'll discuss about them one by one. So, one of the important stages that is intracellular parasite is called as phacocyte. These are usually curved shaped organism their size is between 3 to 6 microns and they are enclosed in a parasite membrane which further help it to form into cyst so here you can see in the diagram a shape is sickle cell or curved shape this is how it looks like when it is intracellular cyst in the cat and feces cyst in the cat feces is called as oocyst which are round in shape and they are usually 10 to 13 micrometer in diameter if you can see in the diagram the oocyst contain two sporocysts each of which contains four sporozoid oocyst further develops into sporulated oocyst which is infectious to humans and animals host intermediate host is human and animals even cat is also acting as intermediate host sometimes while definitely host is always going to be cat or related animals now here you can see the life cycle if we start from the cat you can see the cat in the diagram cat is re releasing oocyst into feces which is consumed by rodents and birds so it will go in their intestine and from there it goes into their tissues and develops um, brady zygote which is tissue cyst now cat a healthy cat might become infected after eating this infected intermediate host similarly this oocyst can be consumed by higher order animals like pigs sheep and goats and it will cause uh, it will form tissue it will form tissue cyst into their muscles when humans are consuming these animals they can got infection and they can also get tissue cyst formation into their body similarly this oocyst can also contaminate food and water by various ways and consumption of such contaminated food and water may lead to uh, tissue cyst formation into human body as you can see in the diagram humans can also get infection by transfer by getting contaminated blood during surgery or any other medical procedures and they can also get infected by uh, mother to fetus transmission through placenta now as i named a few of these structures these structures oocyst is usually present in the cat faces sporulated oocyst is present in the environment so oocyst to sporulated oocyst production takes place in the environmental environment and this is the one which is infectious to uh, intermediate host trichozoite is an intermediate uh, intracellular stage which is present inside the uh, intermediate host body and bradyzoite is the tissue cyst stage which is found inside the cells or inside the tissue sexual reproduction as i told you it concludes its life cycle in two stages so one of them is intras inter, intestinal and other is extra intestinal so interest intestinal stage is also called as sexual reproduction which takes place in the cat and that is why cat is 
named here as definitive host so cat eats meat containing bradyzoid or tissue cyst which enters intestinal epithelial cells and undergoes introepithelial phase undergo a sexual production forming multiple merozoites these can now and these then enters new cells and form gametocytes fertilization of macrogametes and macrogametes that is male and female gametes forms a zygote which develops into oocyst a oocyst bursts the intestinal cell and passes in the cat's feces now when people are consuming food which is contaminated with this oocyst or if they are consuming meat which is having the tissue cyst that is bradyzoites then these particular structures will go to their intestine in the acute phase uh, in, uh, then these oocyst or bradyzoites will penetrate through the intestinal wall and settle down into the muscles of the body and they undergo sexual reproduction in the acute phase parasite multiplies rapidly bursting the infected cells and releasing trichozoites the trichozoite infect new cells and repeat the cycle as the host immune response increases multiplication multiplication rate slows and bradyzoites are formed into the tissues this may act as infective stage when ingested by other animals so here is the life cycle i showed you in the diagram you can go through it to understand the diagram more clearly so next is pathology the bradyzoites or the tissue cysts settle down in the into various muscles of the body that includes skeletal muscles myocardium brain eyes the cyst may remain throughout the life of the host in some cases it may results into the damage of these muscles of tissues as well bradyzoites can pass through placenta and can cause various problems in delivery now because of these issues it may cause various problems as this so as i already told you most of the most of the toxoplasmosis infections are asymptomatic and rarely produce symptoms however it causes problem in in compromised people and in pregnant women so congenital infection occurs in about 1 to 5 per 1000 cases of which 5 to 10% results into miscarriage 8 to 10% results in serious brain and eye damage to fetus 10 to 13% of the babies will have visual handicaps although 58 to 70% of the infected women will have a normal birth a small portion of babies will develop acute retinochoroditis or mental retardation in childhood or young adulthood in immunocompromised people toxoplasmosis may results into flu like symptoms sometimes associated with lymphadenopathy there is enlargement of lymph nodes in immunocompromised individuals infection results in generalized parasitemia with damage to brain liver lungs and other organs of the body and sometimes death also diagnosis now diagnosis can be done by serological methods so for that we can do igg iga igm detection by doing elisa we can also do baston blotting for the antibody detection pcr can also be performed for the detection of uh, parasite nucleic acid in this table you can easily understand in different age groups and different conditions we can choose for different diagnostic options as shown in this table treatment healthy people in that pregnant and non pregnant both kind of women can be included the treatment of choices peri methamine and sulfosinin plus folinic acid and people with hiv or you can say immunocompromised conditions can also be treated with a similar drug option and there is an alternative where pyrimethamine can be taken along with clindamycin prevention obviously as it transmits through orofecal route we should avoid eating un uncooked meat proper sanitation and hygienic condition to avoid contamination of food or water safe blood transfusion or organ transplantation uh, organ transplantation to avoid any risk vaccination for humans there is no vaccine is available however for sheep there is a live vaccine available which is available for the pet thank you